We stand in the shadow of the most magnificent of all American prophets, Thomas Jefferson, a man who would have walked comfortably and spoken with ease with Isaiah and the ancient Jewish prophets. America is a mosaic of diverse communities. As imperfect as we are, together we have reached a plateau of grandeur unmatched in the experience of mankind. I should like to spend my few moments here speaking about one of these communities, my community, the Jewish community of America. From the fall of the Second Temple and the risings against Roman tyranny 20 centuries ago, we Jews were cast out into a foreboding and often hostile world until the American Declaration of Independence, no Jew anywhere had enjoyed the fruits of equal citizenship. In the first two decades of the 20th century, a miracle occurred. After a millennium of repression and abuse, hundreds of thousands of Jews packed it in and fled the bloody pogroms of Russia and Poland. Most of them landed in the Lower East Side of Manhattan until the crush of people made it one of the most densely populated places on Earth. There were several hundred associations bearing the names of their former townships. The moment new immigrants set a foot ashore, battered suitcases in hand, and sackcloths on their shoulders, they were no longer alone but with family. They would inquire for the Shapiro family from Kiev, or my family, the Yerushalimskis from Bialystok, and they were directed to a street and a tenement, maybe a walk-up of five or six floors. The tenement was already filled with wall-to-wall -wall people, but room was made for one more or ten more, for no one was turned away. And they labored 10, 12, 14 hours a day in abominable sweatshops, and they were felled by disease and dwelt with the absence of decent sanitation and infestation by rats and lice. In the summers, they sweltered, and the fire escapes were crammed with sleepers trying to find relief, and they froze by winter. But on they came this burst of hungering humanity. Uptown, German Jews of an earlier emigration hardly knew what to make of it. Many of them were the mercantile princes, the bankers, and the tycoons. There was literally no language between the Russian Jews and the German Jews. The overcrowding and social problems were so massive that the uptown Jews concocted a so-called Galveston plan to ship Jewish immigrants directly to the west to avoid the Lower East Side. But on they came. And as estranged and confounded as the German Jews were about these wild newcomers, the German Jews saw to their health and welfare and education and found them jobs and supported their progress because, after all, they were family as well. Out of this human morass and misery, the miracle unfolded. There came debating societies and chess clubs and intellectual discourse and the sounds of kids learning music and the silence of men and women writing and the fights in the new trade union movement halls. It was an eruption of lust for life with an energy never seen before and perhaps never to be seen again. Our grandfathers were the tailors and the pushcart vendors, but by God, the kids 
went to college. The Lo Lower East Side was like a supernova bursting in the universe. And they moved uptown and across the bridges and across the land, taking with them two things, the morality of their Torah and a boundless love for America. And they enhanced the quality of life for all Americans wherever they sat down. The devotion of America's communities is her greatest strength. No community is more loving, more grateful, and more loyal than we Jews. We, who represent less than 2% of the people, have contributed far beyond our meager numbers to the greatness of this nation. Our gift of over 60 Jewish American Nobel Prize winners will testify. We have earned and deserve the respect of our countrymen. God bless President Clinton, and may he always share his wisdom with you. I believe President Clinton to be a Jeffersonian in his love for the common people. And God bless Hillary Clinton, whose humanity has cast a warm glow across this land. God bless Thomas Jefferson for his affirmation that the true temples and altars to God are not in stone edifices, but in the minds of man, and that God's greatest investment is not in nations, but in the human soul. And God bless America, which continues to strive for the most noble prophecy of all that human dignity is essential to human survival. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Clinton, accompanied by Kent Shiner. Now we will begin